ان الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله Indeed all praise is due to Allah and as such we should praise him we should seek his help and seek refuge in Allah from the evil which is within ourselves and the evil which results from our deeds for whomsoever Allah has guided none can misguide and whomsoever Allah has allowed to go astray none can guide And I bear witness that there is no god worthy of worship but Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the last messenger of Allah. Inna asdaq al-hadith kitab Allah wa khair hadi hadi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wa sharr al-umur muhdathatuha wa kull muhdathatin bid'ah wa kull bid'atin dalalah wa kull dalalatin fi an-nar. Indeed the most truthful form of speech is the book of Allah and the best source of guidance was the guidance brought by Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his sunnah and the worst of all affairs are the opposite to the sunnah innovation in religion known as bid'ah for every innovation in religion is cursed and all cursed innovation leads to misguidance which is why it is cursed and ultimately all misguidance leads to hell because it is the work of satan in the previous two khutbas i spoke about the quality of patience prior to that we looked at the quality of gratitude and spoke about its importance in the life of the believer for the last two khutbas i spoke about patience the other wing of the bird of which represents the believer one wing being patience and the other wing being gratitude the believer needs both to be able to traverse this world so in the previous session or sessions khutbas we spoke about when patience was required after looking at the origin of patience its reality and we said it was required in three instances the first of which was in the worshiping of Allah and in the following of his commandments and that's the one that we spoke about in the last khutbah in this khutbah we will be looking at patience in abstaining from wrong actions and patience in accepting the divine decree in terms of abstaining from wrong actions patience is achieved through two basic channels one channel which is through fear of Allah's punishment by being conscious of the consequences for the acts that we do if we have that as a reality if hell has meaning in our lives then it will restrain us for fear of the punishment that is to come we would stop for fear of the consequences of driving too fast we slow down we see the radar camera we slow down 
for fear of the consequences. We're doing that all the time. So similarly, because the radar is real, nobody has to tell us to slow down. We do it automatically. It's real. And we're told that if you jump the red light, you'll be caught on camera and it's going to be 6,000 reals. So we don't jump the red light because we believe it's real. Though, not every red light has a camera. We're not sure which ones do and which ones don't, so we don't. But it's real enough that it stops us from jumping the red light. But because of the fact that hell, the hellfire, is not that real to us. It's like something we read about, we hear about it. But it's not real in our minds, so it doesn't stop us from wrong actions. This is one problem area. Obviously, in order for us to abstain from wrong actions through fear of its punishment, then it means we have to nurture that fear. We have to develop it through being familiar with the word of Allah, reading the Quran, and this is the month for reading the Quran more often, reflecting on what Allah is saying there, reading the advice that the Prophet ﷺ gave to try to help us have a closer understanding, a, a more real understanding of what the hellfire truly represents. The second source of patience is what is known as haya. Haya or shame. Shame to do something which we know is displeasing to Allah. Allah has given us all these bounties and we are using these bounties, these blessings in a way which is displeasing to Him. That is something like the shame we feel to do things in front of our parents. Maybe we might do it in front of our colleagues, in front of our friends, but when it comes to our parents, we feel shy to do these things. So it stops us. That's that shame. We feel a sense of shyness or shame. And ultimately, that is the higher level of patience. Because that is equivalent to what the Prophet ﷺ called ihsan. Where one stops oneself from doing what is displeasing to Allah. Why? Because of this sense of shame before Allah. We have to be conscious of Allah's presence for that sense of shame to have an impact. So it is, as the Prophet described it, doing deeds as if Allah sees us, as if He were there watching us. We are conscious of His watching. So we try to do it in the best way. That is the higher level of patience where we abstain from doing wrong. The second level, which is also a part of faith, is abstaining because of the fear of the punishment. And if this weren't important, then Allah would not have mentioned all of these verses in the Quran describing the punishment in the hellfire. So, it is not that this is to be rejected and said, no, it's not important. We should do it out of shyness. No. We strive through both channels. And in this way, we are able to then stop ourselves from actions which are displeasing to Allah. Why? Because ultimately those actions will destroy the faith. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ had said that a person who commits adultery is not a believer. At the time that he is committing adultery, his faith is virtually nullified. Similarly, one who drinks alcohol is not a believer at that time. One who steals is not a believer at that time. He talked about major acts of sin and speaking about Iman leaving that person at that point in time. So that is the consequence of 
evil actions so we should abstain from it uh, striving to make the hellfire real and to have a consciousness of Allah that will cause us to be shy and this is what Ramadan is about isn't it we said that the main purpose of the fast of Ramadan was to develop taqwa that's what taqwa is about developing a sense of Allah's presence consciousness of Allah which would then cause us to be very shy to do things knowing that he knows that he sees that he hears this is what this month of fasting is about that's why Allah described it in the Quran saying "O oh, you believe fasting has been prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you in order that you develop taqwa consciousness of Allah so in developing this element of patience to prevent ourselves from doing wrong this is the root the other root is that of patience this is the third form patience in times of trial and adversity this is the third area in which patience is needed and of course this area is one which everybody faces because our lives are mixed with trials big trials little trials ups and downs that is the nature of our lives and Allah said Allah promises us that he will try and test each every one of us each and every one of us with something whether it's in our wealth our children you know uh, life people dying around us these trials are going to be there the fruits of our efforts that we make we've done work so hard they're lost gone these are trials with no way to escape it and the only way to overcome it is as Allah said give glad tidings to those who are patient so that's the only way through it how do we develop that patience patience to deal with the trials first and foremost if we think about the reward that awaits us as Allah said give glad tidings to those who are patient glad tidings of what of paradise so if we reflect on the reward that comes from patience then this should help us to develop patience in this area secondly if we reflect also that whatever trials we face now it is not continuous Allah has promised that in yusra with every difficulty will come peace so it will not last forever it might seem forever when we're in the middle of it when it's happening to us